Okay, YouTubers, I have uh, had a very interesting run of events. I was not familiar. As you know, this is the first LS swap I've done on my own vehicles. And I'm not that familiar with how to fill the cooling system. Well, I found out <clears throat> when you completely drain the cooling system and have to refill it, you're almost required to A, either buy one of those vacuum kits where you can vacuum all the air, put your cooling system under a vacuum and have it, have it draw in your antifreeze or coolant until it's full. Um, a couple of my friends who are professional mechanics do have those setups. I per do not have one. <clears throat> so I had a suggestion from a viewer that you take off your upper radiator hose and you have to fill the block through your upper radiator hose or upper, you know, part of your water pump because the way the LS puts the thermostat down on the lower radiator hose, you can fill up your radiator, but it will not allow coolant into the block. Like I even have the aftermarket thermostat that has the little, uh, I think they call it bleeder valve. And if I'd have known that it was gonna be this hard to get coolant into that block, I would have drilled a couple of extra eighth inch holes in that thermostat like I do on a traditional V8 or any kind of engine that I work on and change the thermostat, I generally, I generally uh, gosh, starting back in maybe the 80s or 90s, I've always added little eighth inch bleeder holes in the factory or aftermarket thermostats because I don't like fighting air bubbles where I can't get the stupid cooling system to burp. Well, I, uh, Filled up, tried to, after I created those stupid radiator hoses, those, you know, homemade radiator hoses to fit this stupid application, I was going to fill up the cooling system, let it run long enough to burp. I couldn't get that stupid thing to flow. Like that, that system, without putting uh, coolant into the block itself, it wasn't going to do it. I mean, it just would not heat up the coolant enough to open the thermostat without coolant already in the block apparently <clears throat> so after following the advice or the suggestion of one of my viewers I pulled off that top radiator hose I started filling the block from the top I just got that thing filled up and water just started gushing out of the weep hole of the water pump now I had a new water pump that I could put on this engine and contrary to my own, you know, like my own common sense, I really and truly was like, oh, well, hey, this engine was running. It was in service. It was running in the vehicle that I bought it from. Why change it now? Let's just wait, you know, until it fails and then I can put on the new pump. Huge mistake huge bleeping mistake because you know it wasn't that hard because thank god ls engines are really easy to change a water pump on but being that it's really close <clears throat> to my radiator made it a little more challenging but not that bad once you take off the idler next to the alternator the water pump will come straight out of the top but I just want you guys to know, don't second guess yourself. Like if you're sitting there and thinking, I need to, let's just go ahead and put a new water pump on. Let's change it. If you start thinking about changing parts that you know or have mileage on them or potentially could be bad, just follow your instinct and put the dumb things on there. Because it was a huge headache. It set me back a half a day to do the running around to go and you know warranty out a, a good water pump because I had a pump for my 4.8 that, that was really low mileage but I just went ahead and uh, warranty swapped it out for a brand new one so that I could uh, throw it on my blazer and not worry about it 
<clears throat> again, once we got that on, uh, we I went ahead and I had to go buy more coolant because, of course, I captured some of my coolant into a, a vessel when I pulled my hoses, but uh, it got contamination in it, and I couldn't find my stupid paint filters to clean, you know, filter it out. So I had to go buy another gallon of stupid coolant. But I got everything filled through the top of the top inlet on the water pump or the top radiator hose. Then fit can finish topping off the radiator, and uh, I let it start and run. Keep in mind, I am admitting I don't have a temperature gauge hooked up, so I'm very cautious about how long I let it run. But I let it run for a total of maybe 12 minutes, and I backed it out, backed it out of the garage so I could start sweeping up the floor, and uh, the water had started to circulate at least to the, to the degree that it had gone down maybe an inch in the radiator. So I went ahead and shut it off because I'm not going to take any chances on hurting anything. <clears throat> I don't even have my cooling fan relays plugged in right now, so it's just running on coolant flow. So long story short, the, it is running. The limp mode slash won't rev much above idle issue is still, is still a huge problem. Uh, I'm going to have to make a separate video concerning that issue because I've got a few things I want to check before I overreact and you know basically blast someone on YouTube because I want to check a few sensors I might check my coolant sensor my coolant temp sensor because I want to alleviate any possible cause external to why that PCM keeps putting the engine in limp mode. Keep in mind, I'm doing this purely out of the kindness of my being because we have installed my PCM into three separate vehicles and all three went into limp mode. So that shows <clears throat> that it's not an oil pressure issue. It's not a cam sensor it's not a crank sensor it's not a tps it's not a you know it's not a map it's not a ma a math it's it's none of those sensors causing it to go into limp mode it's not the aftermarket standalone wiring harness everything has been eliminated we grounded pins number 32 and 34 just like the tuner requested still in limp mode it's so frustrating to deal with someone who has not done a good job and they won't admit it. You know what I mean? Like, I stand behind my work when I port cylinder heads. If it's not right, I'll fix it. If I hurt it, I'll fix it or replace it. That's how a real person does business. When I send my computer out to have it flash and it comes back and it doesn't do what it's supposed to do and I can't even drive the vehicle because it's in limp mode, and I try several times to contact him. Hey, man, this thing's in limp mode. What do you think's going on? Oh, yeah, yeah. All you got to do is ground pin number 32. You should be good to go. We grounded the pin. Didn't work. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to go ahead and ground pin 34 because that's the other input for the park reverse neutral drive. Oh, okay, no problem. So we grounded it. Same problem. It ain't working. Pull the PCM out, throw it in an 01 Yukon. Huh, would you believe it? That Yukon goes into limp mode. Yeah, because the fucking computer ain't right. My God, people, have some, have some morality. Have some hair on your ass or, you know, grow some balls. Do something and stand behind your work. You know, it could have been a simple, single input error that caused this whole headache. I would have gladly paid to ship the PCM back to him. He uses flat rate shipping boxes through the freaking post office. This whole thing could have been fixed for probably $8. Under 10 bucks, I guarantee you, like $8. This could have been resolved. Everybody would have been happy, <clears throat> but no. Instead, the tuner wants to take the position that 
he didn't like the answers that I gave to, sorry, to the questionnaire on his eBay sale and said that I gave him garbage information and without, without proper information, how could he be expected to do a good job? I will do a separate video and show you the form that you answer the question about, you know, he'll ask you 11 questions, what you want to do, you answer the 11 questions, you include it with your PCM, and you mail it to him. Okay, this ain't rocket science. You don't need a college degree to answer 11 questions on what you need done to your PCM for this TARD to do his job. That's just the way that works. I apologize if I'm getting sarcastic because I've dealt with this dude for weeks and I don't know what else to say. So anyway, the blazer is running. Oil's full, water's almost full, brake fluid's full, clutch master's full, transmission's full. You know, it's getting closer and closer to being able to roll down the road. Does not have the exhaust. It does not have the cold air intake on it because I'm gonna have to order a different kit that has a four inch down to three inch 90 because I don't have quite enough room between the radiator and the core support to squeeze in the four inch pipe that I planned on running. But I'll order that, get it set up, just so for all those people that were worried about the math, the math is currently pushed into the front of the throttle body and it is reading and it's not throwing any code, so nobody freak out on me. But I'll get the cold air intake, get the math properly mounted near the filter because for some reason, even though Cadillac mounts their maths right on the front of the stupid throttle body, GM says that the math sensor is supposed to be a minimum of 12 inches from the throttle body. <clears throat> I don't know why that is. It has something to do with continuity and smoothness of airflow. But I don't want to cause any more problems with this stupid car. So I'm going to move that thing over to the driver's side of the engine compartment, run my 90, do my pipe, mount the MAF, put the filter on it, and be done. Uh, the O2 sensors, I'm going to have to take it to a, an exhaust shop. So that we can put on, we'll bolt on our, our uh, second half of our, like, I think it's two and a half or two and three quarter inch band clamp set up, take it, have them run pipe, and we're going to have to add our O2 bones and then put in our O2 sensors, which I already have. But downside, for some reason, my uh, standalone harness has female O2 ends on it. Now, if, just in case you weren't aware, O2 sensors themselves have female ends on them. So we were trying to plug in some O2s to see if that would help the throttle response issue, which they shouldn't have anything to do with it because all it would do is make it run really rich if it got to the point where it would throw a code. To this point, we hadn't even got an O2 code out of it. but. Long story short, I got to get some pigtails to put on my stupid harness so that I have the right uh, male connector to plug into my stupid O2 sensor. So anyway, I hate to ramble on like that, but I was just over here working on this thing for a while. Got it running enough where I could back it out in the driveway and kind of look for drips, see if I need to tighten any hose clamps because, you know, that stuff happens. So. Anyway, I know this is one of those boring stationary, you know, recordings where I'm not moving around. I know a lot of people have commented to me. They like to see me move around and not stand in one spot and talk. But this is kind of an impromptu uh, video. And I wanted to get something uh, recorded so I can upload it tonight when I get home. So I appreciate you guys watching. I uh, appreciate you guys listening to my rant and rave because that's really frustrating me about the PCM. And I will have more videos probably up tomorrow. Thank you guys.